and tell me that's not hate. I didn't wait a second. Now, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. If, you, if you're very coarse in your discourse, whether it's political or in private, it has an effect on society. Uh, to prosecute him criminally was a big mistake and you're going to pay for it in this country. Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to watch Jordan Peterson completely and utterly outclass a bunch of politicians and bureaucrats on BBC Question Time. The difference in IQ and types of logic being used here is quite honestly shocking. And it's illustrative of the kinds of people that get into politics and bureaucracy. And the topics that are brought up here, if you're somebody that's interested in free speech, are even more relevant today than they were back then. So let's watch the first section as they begin to discuss the idea of people being prosecuted for speech. I think that sometimes the distinction between abusive speech and abusive action can be an artificial distinction. You might say, why is it wrong to be abusive about politicians and send them racist and sexist stuff online? It doesn't matter. All their threats will never happen. But Parliament saw one of our colleagues, Joe Cox, killed. And that sort of action it's not necessarily the consequence of abusive language, but it is related to abusive language. On the Grenfell Tower, I, I don't think it should be a crime unless the police uh, learn uh, stuff that I don't know. But please, I met a number of those people who died, in, who, who had to see their relatives die in Grenfell Tower, who ran down those steps over dead bodies from Grenfell Tower. And I think it is... Horrific what was done. May not be a crime, but utterly horrific. If you understand the reality of Grenfell Tower, you know it utterly detestable and uh, wrong. Uh, but the, as I say, you can't just say, well, you can call people packies and niggas, it doesn't really matter. It has no relationship to anything else. That type of abusive language does have a relationship to actions which are genuinely harmful and damaging and cruel. And I think sometimes when people are dismissive about, you know, racist and sexist language, they need to be careful. Because what you do is you create a climate where certain actions become legitimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John Peterson. Guys, if you're getting value from this video, please don't forget to take a second out of your time to quickly hit that like button. It helps me out enormously. And also, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, click that red button just below. Back to the clips. Oh, I know in Scotland, the police had put up advertisements in the, in the tube encouraging people to turn people in for offensive behavior online. It seems to me, for example, if you're concerned about knife crime, and maybe one of the things you don't want to do is have your police investigating offensive speech. And one of the do things I do see happening in the UK as an outsider that's really quite terrifying to me is that there are increasing restrictions put on people's ability to speak forthrightly and, and, and th that, the, that the consequence of that restriction and the criminalization of what hypothetically constitutes offensive speech is going to be a cure that's so much more worse than the disease that we can hardly imagine it. It's a dreadful thing to see that happening in the UK. And so, I mean, people say things that are reprehensible all the time, but we can't always agree on what they are. But to start to criminalize that, that it's hypothetical. Are you saying there should, are you saying n no, n nothing that anybody says should ever be counted as a crime? Well, there's incitement to crime. That should, be, that should be counted as a crime and has been for a very long time in the, in the British common law tradition. But other than that, you should be very careful about what you regulate as speech. Who's going to regulate it? Who's going to define hate? That's the real issue. It's not that there's not hate. There's plenty of it. The question is who defines hate and how is it prosecuted? I'm not... frightened of forthright speech. I'm quite a forthright speaker myself. But when you talk about who's going to define hate, you want to see the letters and emails I see sure. day after day and tell me that's not hate. Mm. I didn't wait a second. Now, hang on a second. Hang on, hang on. The difference in intellect between the two people that we just saw 
is absolutely night and day. Diane Abbott, who's a British politician, basically just gave us the Captain Obvious answer if Captain Obvious looked like he was on the verge of a mental breakdown. She basically said, yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be prosecuted, but what happened in Grenfell was really terrible and people really need to be careful when they're using abusive language and then sat back in her chair as if she just served up a home run. Become legitimate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then JP comes in like the smooth operator that he is, and he perfectly encapsulated the issue that the UK is facing right now as they continue to walk blindfolded into the poison ivy bush that is limiting free speech and prosecuting people for speech. He makes the very educated case, which is there is incitement, but then otherwise you can't be arbitrarily prosecuting people for speech because that only leads to pure chaos and disaster. These are politicians we're talking about. They're some of the most disingenuous and unethical people in the world. These are the people who get to decide? Of course they're going to use this for their political advantage. Of course they're going to use this to try and silence their opponents and keep power. Of course that destroys a country's ability to be able to have a clean-hearted dialogue, you fools. And then you see, in real time, as Jordan Peterson's fantastic point ricochets off Diane Abbott's head and she gives us the best possible demonstration that she can possibly muster as to why she should be nowhere near where the decisions are being made as she proceeds to make an irrelevant argument from pure emotion. Somehow from Jordan Peterson saying who is going to define what hate speech is and then prosecute people for it, she somehow managed to make that about herself and how she gets mean messages. That's hate. Mm. I didn't wait yes, a Totally irrelevant. It wasn't about you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect example of logic versus emotion. There is no place for purely emotional arguments like that in politics, and arguably, it gets worse here. When you consider that they um, have bonfires every year where they burn effigies of politicians and famous people, are we now going to criminalise that as well mm -hmm. and press criminal charges against right. people who put up effigies on bonfire night like that um, because we find it offensive, maybe? I know, but I don't think we should encourage it. And I do think there's a link between this item and where we started. I was at a wedding last Friday and the celebrant spoke about courtesy. Nobody can spell the word anymore mm. and respect. And it was actually quite refreshing because I think that is the problem, that there's an inherent rawness and coarseness. And I think politicians, we've allowed it. We've allowed this sense of they can say anything to you. And I'm sure I'm going to get it in the neck on Twitter, but I won't be reading it because I need to sleep. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, but it's not actually funny because it just multiplies. So in, I'm a great believer in freedom of speech. I was a journalist, but your freedom to speak shouldn't interfere with mine. And I do think there's a sensitivity and an accumulative effect when you coarsen language. I looked at the president of the United States, his treatment of journalists today um, was, was, was incredibly and, and when, at a time when journalists are being murdered around the world so i, I think that while I, I support your um notion that we shouldn't ban and stop because it goes underground i think we should try and encourage people to realize that if you if you're very coarse in your discourse whether it's political or in private it has an effect on society uh, are there any words that should be criminal to use brexit all roads lead to Brexit. I was taking a more with serious Brexit, point. Actually. There was We're somebody. Bored with Brexit. There was people some. There were, hang on, hang on. There was somebody fined under the Communications yeah. Act earlier this year because he posed a video on YouTube of a dog mm -hmm. doing a kind of Nazi mm -hmm. salute, and he shouted in the background, Get <laughs> and that was he was fined. And it was a criminal prosecution. Is that right in your view? I didn't think that was right, no. I think it was a big mistake. I mean, I followed that case fairly clearly, fairly carefully, and you don't have to agree that what he did was comical or right, but to, to prosecute him criminally was a big mistake, and you're going to pay for it in this country. Today, Diane, we have to stop there, I think. Just, Diane, just, briefly, just on that. As I would, I would say that type of video is somebody shouting is an incitement to racial hatred, and now that's a crime. Okay. And, and just please, yeah, please, please, please. No, please, it's very true, it's really important. Right. It may be important, but 80 I'm years, just... 80 years ago today, 80 years ago today, the precursor of the Holocaust happened. The night of the shattered glass, if I got Crystal the term. Crystal yeah. So don't underestimate what happens. It's only 80 years ago, 
and Jews were marched, their synagogues were burnt down, anti-Semitism was on the rise. It's hap this, this sentiment is happening again across Europe. And All right, well, I, I just I'm would going be to really worried that people that don't realise that. Yeah. So guys, just for a bit of context there, what he's talking about is a dude who dressed his dog up like a Nazi and made it do offensive salutes and he said some pretty questionable things in the video. But it was a joke and he was prosecuted for that joke. My girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. And so I thought I would turn them into the least cute thing that I could think of. And then what we're seeing here, guys, is the perfect example of what I just mentioned. Politicians who will be opportunistic enough, unethical enough and disingenuous enough to take a joke like that and then hyperbolize it to try and push their own agenda. That is exactly what this lady, Marae McGuinness, just did when she brought up Crystal Nacht. As if to say that somebody doing an offensive joke is going to incite some sort of racial genocide. But of course, it's hidden behind the masquerade of just being caring and being respectful and polite. And she says that she used to be a journalist and that she believes in free speech, but she works a part of the European Parliament and Council. And you know that if there's one workplace where you have to drink the Kool-Aid, it's that. You see guys, it's important to understand that this is what disingenuous politicians do. They will take events like Kristallnacht and they'll take events like the Grenfell fires and they will create a Trojan horse of emotional ideas to get their sinister agenda through the gates of Troy. The sinister agenda being that they want to control your speech. And Jordan Peterson with pinpoint accuracy there predicted that the UK will pay for this and boy are they paying the price right now. The UK is now a fallen state where thousands of people a year are being prosecuted for hate speech. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. Hey, can, you, can you just remind me again why I'm being arrested? Right, so you're under arrest for Section 157 of the Communications Act 2003. Honestly, I was thinking, is it 1939? Is this the Gestapo? Literally, yeah. you know. I thought, what, what am I here for? This is just ridiculous. People's bank accounts are being shut down for dissenting opinions. And they've just passed the online safety bill, which allows governments to access encrypted messages from platforms such as Signal and also to censor speech on social media platforms like YouTube, Instagram, etc. And my advice to anybody living in the UK who could be affected by this, and I am one of those people, I lived in London for three years and I'm a citizen of the UK, my advice would be to get out of there. There are much better places to live. Don't go down with the sinking ship. So on that note, guys, my locals link is gonna be pinned at the top of the comments there. I do hope that you guys will come and check me out over there. And if you guys wanna check me out in other places, you can also hit my link tree. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it's gonna be right here. And if you wanna watch another video, click right here. Until next time, I'm Jake, this is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.